Fall is easily my favorite time of the year. The leaves change color, the temperature becomes more bearable, school is nearly at its end, and most importantly, fall brings with it one of my favorite emotions. Fear, terror, goblins, skeletons, and or dead people, spiders, long-legged creature, man with hook for art. <laughs> That's right, everybody, it's Halloween. And unlike the past two years, I decided to focus my Halloween efforts into one single video. Halloween's easily one of my favorite holidays, and I always like to play it up a bit, focus on a show that I'm really into, talk about its Halloween episodes. We've already done regular show with Terror Tales from the Park. Now, we are gonna be talking about Jimmy Neutron Boy Geniuses Halloween, or at least, spooky episodes. Now I love Jimmy Neutron. This was one of my favorite shows as a kid and it holds up fairly well in the writing department. The animation's a little iffy in some areas, but one thing that surprised me about Jimmy Neutron is that it actually only has one Halloween episode. So in order to do a whole video on Jimmy Neutron Halloween episodes, I kind of had to get creative in some areas. So today we are talking about the five scariest, spoopiest, mood settingest Halloween episodes of Jimmy Neutron. Let's get into this. Our first spooky scary episode is The Phantom of Retroland. A dare leads Jimmy and pals to stay overnight at Retroland to prove once and fall, once and fall all? What the fuck? <laughs> now that's not, <laughs> that's not scripted. I, I wanna point that out. This isn't a scripted thing. I was just gonna read the description off of IMDB for convenience sake. And there is, there's a typo in it for sure. I swear to God, there's stuff I like shot in advance that's gonna be scripted in this video. Don't worry. That <laughs> that's new, that's news to me. <laughs> so, Neutron, I guess you wouldn't be afraid to go to the park at midnight. And I'll say if I was to uh, triple dog dare you. Okay. Okay. Jimmy's hair. <laughs> Has clipped through the lockers in this scene, which is a mistake that frankly, I don't know how you miss it. Now, obviously the, you know, this is Nick Nickelodeon it's not the highest budget around but you'd have to notice this mistake I mean that is half of his hair is in the locker in this shot from him leaning back and they're like oh it's fine it's fine it doesn't even look like it gets like pushed back at all or that he like, like that is that's a pretty egregious, a pretty spooky, scary mistake, if you ask me. It's probably gonna be the scariest thing in this entire episode. As far as spooky Jimmy Neutron episodes go, you can't really go wrong with this one. However, I'm a little bit biased towards this episode because for some reason when I was a child, I feel like I saw this episode more than any other episode of the entire show. It's really competently put together. There's setups and payoffs. It's of course only 11 minutes of the 22 total minutes of the show because it's an A, B setup to the episode. So one story in the front half, another story in the back half. So there isn't as much time to really develop a, a big spooky, scary Halloween story. But I think for 11 minutes, for the setup that they have going to Retroland after dark and looking for a spooky specter of sorts, it works pretty well. And they set up this thing with like a floating butt plug on the ceiling. Jimmy, Jimmy's using the earth to swing a butt plug off, off the ceiling. I don't, cool, I guess. Because the earth's rotating beneath the pendulum, any moment now the first domino will move in front of it and be knocked over. In this episode, of course, Jimmy hangs a butt plug from the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> with the string, he, st he steals a butt plug. What the fuck is that supposed to be? Look at Jimmy's face. Jimmy's in, Jimmy's in pure ecstasy looking at that thing. You cannot tell me that's not a butt plug. <laughs> Look at him. That, some of these still frames, I swear, are going to be funnier than anything I can say in this in this video that I'm doing. That is, that's amazing. Believe it or not, that butt plug comes back later on. It's how they defeat the fake phantom of Retroland, and the reason this is the first one we're talking about and why it's not higher on our spooky scary list here is because and jimmy neutron does this a lot 
the stakes of the episode are taken down over and over and over again. There's supposed to be this big reveal that, oh my god, the Phantom of Retroland is Nick, and he was messing with us, and he's the one that also dared us also, so he was he had a you know motive to be there. That twist makes sense, except like 20 seconds after that twist takes place, Cindy and Libby are also the Phantom of the Park. And then Jimmy's mom is also the Phantom of the Park. And then there is an actual Phantom of the Park. It's just too much. And it kind of brings the entire episode to a standstill in those last few minutes. It felt like they had a story set up and it was only about eight minutes long. So they kept on adding different twists to get to the length that they needed. It just didn't work in that area so much. But as far as a spooky little Jimmy Neutron story that is fit for Halloween, I think this one works all right. I, I honestly don't mind it all that much, especially when you have an 11 minute episode with something that's set up in the beginning, paid off at the end, all the characters had motivation, the ending was just a good bit shaky. But this one doesn't even come close to our next spooky scary episode. Up next is, I forgot I put this one where I put it, is Who's Your Mommy? An episode that I'm sure many of you have heard of. The plot for this episode is on a trip to planet Shmenji, a strange alien substance attaches itself to Carl's face. Now this IMDb synopsis goes right up until the part that makes this episode uh, a kind of body horror classic, as it were. You see, this alien attaches itself to Carl's face, and in doing so, face f Carl. Now that's gonna be bleeped because YouTube doesn't like the those words that I'm using, but it, you know, the, the action leads to Carl becoming pregnant. So you can imagine what the beeped out thing is. I'm sure you know. I'll say it again just for funny's sake. F fucked. Now we're reading each other. Carl, I don't know how to say this, so I'll whisper it in Sheen's ear and he'll blurt it out in astonishment. Carl is pregnant? What? Well, sort of. <laughs> yeah, see this? This frame, <laughs> this frame is great. Uh, as you can see, Sheen is about to take Carl from behind. God, I can't use any of this. I can't use, like, any 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 riffing I do, any talking about, like, the subject matter of this episode, I'm either getting demonetized, canceled. There's no way around just how bizarre this episode is. And you know whoever wrote it was probably sitting down just loving every second of it. Just an absolute creep. <laughs> now, does this one technically count as a Halloween episode? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's weird. It's gross. It makes me wildly uncomfortable. I'd count that as a form of fear, I guess. The fear of being not comfortable. So uh, I'll qualify it in that area. Frankly, this one, I, I put it above the Phantom of Retroland because of just how strange it is. How gross it is. Just uh, how overall this episode does not make any sense to me. I don't know how someone sat down and wrote this and thought... Yeah, this will, this will make for a good episode of Jimmy Neutron. So Who's Your Mommy, of course, is a reference to the fact that Carl gives birth to an alien in this episode out of his butthole. Uh, I think a better title would be Carl Gets Face Fucked, but granted it's Nickelodeon, you can't say stuff like that, so... Uh, I mean, we'll take it. It's, uh, ooh, it's spooky. <laughs> I guess it's kind of spooky scary. Uh, my whole reasoning for this one, I was, I was gonna make a joke about it being body horror, but honestly, it just... This whole episode, it's a, a, a male child becoming pregnant from an alien, unwillingly, on Nickelodeon. <laughs> if that's not scary, frankly, I don't know what is. Save yourself! It's time. That is the sound of Carl shitting his pants. I don't, that's just, oh my God. So much of this is just disgusting, uncomfortable. It's not last place. It's probably, you know what? That as, for, you know, moving on. <laughs> Our next episode is Sleepless in Retroville. The plot of this one is Jimmy invents a machine that maximizes sleepover fun. Now, this episode to me ranks so highly just because of the opening joke. Here is the opening sequence, opening joke of this episode. Hi, Mr. 
your new track. We're here. Are you ready for us? Sleeping bags? Toothbrushes? You're moving in. Oh, no. Two more mouths to feed. Braces. College, honey! That alone, that line delivery, it's just a nice little setup, eases you right in. Great, hilarious. He was the best character in this show. You there's no fighting over that whatsoever. Mwah, just a just a perfect opening joke to this episode. And the plot is just as the synopsis says. It's the guys having a sleepover, Jimmy, Carl, and Sheen. And Jimmy invents a machine that makes the sleepover more fun, but once you know it goes wrong and an evil pizza starts attacking them. The time has come for scary stories. Well, okay, but um, not too scary, Jimmy, because remember what happened the last time when I got too scared? Hey, did you bring your rubber sleeping bag? Yes. Did he shit himself? Did Carl Weezer crap himself out of fear or did he urinate or a combination of both probably a combination of both if the story really was scary enough i mean we've all been there <laughs> this episode captures something that not a lot of shows are able to capture in my mind and that's just that kind of childlike spooky scary irrational fear <laughs> type feeling i guess I don't know what it is, but I remember seeing this episode as a kid and it made me like want to have a sleepover. It was like a call to action for me to like, oh, I want to hang out with my friends and, and eat pizza and tell scary stories. Like that, that was something I wanted to do and seeing Jimmy do it with his friends, I was like, that's so goddamn cool. It captures that, that mindset you have as a kid almost. And I don't think enough kids shows are able to do that. Although I wouldn't classify Jimmy Neutron as a kid's show. I would classify it as a modern art piece, but that's a video for another day. Yeah, I really have trouble putting why I love this episode so much into words. It's one that I saw a lot as a kid. I think I had it on like a, a VHS, like I recorded it or something like that, because I was watching it all the time as a kid. It came up constantly. It gives me the it gives me the feeling of being a kid a bit. You could call that nostalgia. I think it's the episode's execution as a whole. It's really simplistic, stripped down. You have these three things that happen at sleepovers. You have pillow fights, you have eating some pizza, and you have staying up late and telling spooky stories. And they all come together for a big fun climax where they, they use the story from before to destroy the monster that's attacking them. And then the entire episode gets ruined Again, by Jimmy Neutron not knowing how to end its episodes. Similar to The Phantom of Retroland, this episode's big problem is the way it executes its ending. It would have been perfectly fine to have this threat in this episode be real. Like, a pizza attacking you, it's pretty goofy, it's pretty silly, but it's a cartoon and it's also Jimmy Neutron. It's within the realm of reason. But for some reason, they decided to do like the quadruple fake out again, just like in Phantom of Retroland. And the episode turns out to be a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream. Like, layers upon layers of dreams. And it's just so stupid to me. I hated it as a kid and I hate it now. And it's definitely a padding thing. I think they did not have enough episode to fit the time slot they had. Cause again, this is an 11 minute one. So they stretched it out with this stupid dream within a dream within a dream ending. It's so dumb. This is one of those things I've noticed a lot with shows that I watched when I was a kid. It seemed like Whoever was making these shows or producers that were in charge of the shows, it seems like they didn't want there to be any real threats, which is stupid. It's okay to have real threats and real stakes to your stories and episodes. That's what makes them compelling and interesting. That's what gets us engaged in the story. This episode and Phantom of Retroland completely throw the threat out of the window in the last two minutes or so, and it kind of makes the entire episode feel trivial. This episode as a whole is pretty dang solid, but that ending, that, that ending to me is just no good whatsoever. We're gonna talk about an episode that I think nails its ending and is a great example of setting up stakes in a real life threat, and by the end of the episode, the threat seems even scarier, and that sticks with you as a viewer. So we'll get to that one as that example when it comes. But before we get to that, we have to get to the actual Halloween episode of Jimmy Neutron. Nightmare in Retroville. This is the official Halloween episode 
for Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, all right? This is the this is the real deal, no counterfeit here. Sheen and Carl want scary Halloween costumes. However, when Jimmy turns them into monsters, they terrorize the town. This episode has one major plus to it that none of the other episodes we're gonna talk about today have, and that is the fact that this episode is actually about 22 minutes long. And because of that, it can tell a full spooky, scary story that feels like it has actual stakes. So like the plot synopsis says, Jimmy basically tricks Sheen and Carl into letting him turn them into spooky, scary monsters in exchange for, I think, half of their candy each. So, you know, Jimmy comes out on top on that one, that little asshole. I <laughs> like, what, what a, well, what a great friend. Jimmy, Jimmy's willing to take half of your candy for pulling a lever and sitting at home. Fuck you, Jimmy. But Sheen gets turned into a werewolf and Carl gets turned into a vampire. And, uh-oh, the machine that Jimmy was using is no good and it made them into real monsters and they turn Libby and Cindy into respective monsters as well. This is my 27th greatest adventure ever. <laughs> One of the one of the monsters on Jimmy's monster machine is uh is Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh man, I think this is 2004, 2005, so it, uh, you know, in case you didn't know, people always kind of considered that dude a fucking creep. <laughs> That's great. This episode as a whole works pretty well as a Halloween episode. There isn't a whole bunch to write home about. It's just a nice you know, stop the, the monsters from terrorizing the town kind of plot. It's really straightforward. Retroville is really, really empty also because it kind of always is because that would take a lot of assets and animation and 3D modeling that the show didn't really have the budget for. And that actually works in favor, I think, for this episode with how empty Retroville is. It feels empty, it feels off, it feels spooky. It just works really well for the episode, but the one thing, the one real key that made this episode rank above all others in terms of being scary is this scene. What is that? It's horrible. It's hideous. It's Jimmy? No, it's Octopus Man. <gasps> Me love you. I've had it. Flying octopuses is where I draw the line. Yeah, it runs. Ah! That, that's disgusting. I am disgusted. We talked about Carl Weezer getting pregnant uh, forcefully by an alien, and this disgusts me somehow more than that. What a gross, ugly, horrifying model to use. I hate looking at that. That one bit with Jimmy alone is enough for me to say this is one of the scariest episodes of Jimmy Neutron, because I just hate, hate looking at that. And the episode as a whole, works pretty dang well as a fun Halloween story. But that right there, cherry on top. That is a terrifying image that will stick with you. Now, while this episode isn't the specific episode I was talking about when it comes to a threat that gets scarier by the end of the episode instead of completely trivializing it, I still feel like the stakes in this episode are really great. You feel like there's an actual threat to Jimmy and the town. And I feel like it's appealing for some executives, some writers to not put real threats or trivialize the threats at the end of the episode because it's, oh, it's, it's a show for kids. We don't want to put them in stressful situations, but life is one gigantic stressful situation. Jimmy Neutron facing a real life deadly pizza isn't going to kill anyone. <laughs> like it, maybe, maybe it causes a couple of nightmares, maybe. But they defeat him at the end. I think that's the key. So long as you don't have him like eat Jimmy Neutron, you know, like it's not that big, big of a deal. It's okay to have real threats, real enemies, real villains in your content. And no episode shows this better than our number one spooky, scary Jimmy Neutron episode. One of Us, easily the spookiest episode of Jimmy Neutron. And this is an episode that I am not ashamed of saying actually scared me a bit as a wee child. The plot of the episode is a new TV show turns everyone in Retroville into mindless and exceedingly cheerful zombies. This episode is just 
perfect in my mind as far as like a spooky children's show episode. It's everyone getting brainwashed by this sweet old lady and trying to get Jimmy and frankly everyone else who hasn't watched the show to watch the show. It's a really simple premise, really straightforward. It is off-putting too, especially with how the animation is done on this show. Everyone already kind of looks like they have dead eyes, so giving them bigger, more unblinking dead eyes really accentuates just how creepy Retroville can be, especially in this scene right here. Libby, did you just turn some music off? Hello, Jimmy. I'm happy to see you. Did you watch the Happy Show Show last night? You should watch the Happy Show Show, Jimmy. It would make me very happy. My scientific curiosity had been aroused, so I f Like, those are dead eyes. Those are- those were dead eyes before they- that's- all- those have always been- they were born dead eyes, they will die dead eyes terrifying. And the plot's really straightforward. It's just Jimmy learning about this TV show, thinking it's terrible, realizing it's brainwashing the town, and then he has to work together with Cindy, who is away on a karate tournament, as they are the only two people left in Retroville not brainwashed by this show. And it has some set pieces to it, which is something I don't often say about Jimmy Neutron episodes, because they tend to be on the uh, I guess cheaper side, just because 3D animation, very, very expensive, especially for an episode like this that came out in, I believe, like 2006, something like that. So not a lot of TV shows were using 3D animation. Frankly, not a lot of them do now because it is incredibly expensive. So to have actual set pieces, different locations, especially for an 11 minute episode, it's great to see. And just to accentuate my point even further about there not being that many set pieces in a whole lot of Jimmy Neutron episodes, one of my favorite episodes, Sleepless in Retroville, takes place pretty much entirely inside of Jimmy Neutron's house and then a little bit at the end in a pizzeria. And the pizzeria looks like garbage, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I love how this episode is executed. I really don't have any problems with it. Uh, everything makes sense, everything is set up. And the one thing that I've been hyping up in this video that this episode does right is its threat. Grandma Taters at first seems like a sweet old lady who's just mistaken, she's trying to make the entire town happy, wants to make the entire world happy eventually. It seems like she has good intentions, but then you realize at the end of the episode that she was actually a far more terrifying threat. We'll be back. That scene right there, this entire episode, scared the shit out of me as a kid, and I'm not ashamed of saying that. I feel like this episode, to this day, is still really well executed. It's off-putting, it's creepy. It's just a perfect, spooky episode for Jimmy Neutron, and that's why it's number one on my list. Looking back at these five episodes, I think it's safe to say that Jimmy Neutron is not the scariest show on television, but it's one of my favorites from my childhood, and I always have a great time talking about it. So thank you all very much for watching this video. If you think I got something wrong, if you think I forgot an episode, let me know down in the comment section below. And most importantly, have a very scary, spooky, whatever you wanna call it, Halloween. Have a good time, everybody. It's one of my favorite holidays, one of my favorite times of the year. Watch these episodes, watch the Poloni Show Halloween special, watch Nightmare Before Christmas. There's so much great stuff out there. It's a wonderful, wonderful time of the year. So I'm going to go enjoy it by not watching Jimmy Neutron anymore because I had to watch these episodes like nine times for this video because I kept putting it off. See you later, everybody. Halloween's out, bitches. It's Christmas now. Mm -hmm.